Hello everyone, my name is Lorena Gutierrez Nava and with my team, Stephanie Serrano Saavedra, Carla Yatana Melgarejo Toriz and Fatima Bonifacio Segura, we are going to present Mexico, a history of gender violence, apparently endless, gender-based violence. The background of the history of the issue is the history of gender violence in Mexico. Violence against women is often represented as a timeless and universal phenomenon, suggesting the problem is too large to fix or only the worst abuses are worth our attention. The term femicide is not homicide of those that simply happen to be female, but rather females who are systematically murdered because of the fact that they're female. Some historians identify La Conquista, during which Spanish colonizers, such as Hernán Cortés and his conquistadors arrived in the American continent and raped indigenous women as the beginning of a culture of gender violence. In line with European thinkers of the time, the general consensus in Mexico was that women were more related to the domestic task as opposed to men, who were born to think and act as independent agents. The year was 1993, just miles away from the BUC city center of Ciudad Juarez, Mexico. The battered corpses of young girls and women were found in the desert. They were discarded like garbage after violent assault and abuse. Tragically, there are a thousand stories like this one. Women step skinned, disemboweled, raped, and murdered. Little girls had been kidnapped from their preschools in broad daylight. Corpses have often been discarded in canals, and at times reporting a disappearance is where the investigation ends. From this, machismo was born in Latin America. Machismo similar to toxic masculinity is the set of ideals and beliefs that support the notion that men are superior to women. In the next 10 minutes, approximately, three women in Mexico will have been a victim of abuse. Then femicides will occur by the end of the day. Next. Causes. There are three important reasons of gender violence explained by Olivia Giovetti. First, the harmful gender norms. Gender stereotypes are often used to justify violence against women. Cultural norms often dictate that men are aggressive, controlling, and dominant, while women are docile, subservient, and rely on men as providers. The other reason is hunger. It doesn't make so much, so much sense, right? But women and girls face more early and forced marriages as families seek to try to reduce their food bill. Women may have to sell sex to survive and money shortages increase tensions within families, which can lead to violence. And the last reason is war and conflict. According to Girls Not Brides, heat marriage has increased since the start of the crisis, as parents hope that through marriage, their daughters will be cared for. Other women also face unique dangers in times of crisis making everyday activities like going to the bathroom or collecting water potentially dangerous due to the risk of rape or sexual abuse. Other causes explained by the National Academics of Science, Engineering, and Medicine says that the recent comprehensive literature review concluded that high testosterone levels tend to cover with high probabilities of aggressive behaviors dominant status and pathological forms of aggression in non-human mammals, but that the picture of for humans is not that clear. There appears to be a correlation between testosterone levels and aggression. Unfortunately, the results of human studies of neurotransmitters are not conclusive. They also say that violence can occur by social learning. The theory says that humans learn social behavior by observing others' behavior, and the consequences of that behavior, forming ideas about 
what behaviors are appropriate. Try those behaviors and continuing them if the results are positive. This theory, this theory does not view aggression as, an, as inevitable, but rather sees it as a social behavior that is learned and shaped by its consequences. Gender perspective. According to the general law for equality between women and men, the gender perspective refers to the methodology and mechanisms that allow identifying, questioning, and evaluating discrimination, inequality, and exclusion of women. It seeks to show that the differences between women and men are given not only by their biological determination, but also by the cultural differences assigned to human beings. Now, after knowing its definition, we are left with the question, what is the gender perspective for? This approach questions the stereotypes with which we are educated and opens the possibility of elaborating new contents of socialization and relationship between human beings. The use of this perspective raises the need to solve the imbalances that exist between women and men. The importance of applying the gender perspective lies in the possibilities it offers to understand how discrimination against women occurs and the ways to transform it. Consequence. Alpha feminism has been a problem for many years in Mexico. Several high profile cases and the protests have emerged in the country over the last year. The Not One Woman Less campaign began in Argentina in 2015 and swept through Latin America, including in Mexico. In August 2019, after the alert rape of the teenage girl by a group of policy authors north of Mexico City, protests Ali rallied in Mexico City in the so-called Glitter Revolution. Eventually, Shane Bob office the, and the AMLA administration agreed to make the femicide and gender-based crimes and priority and Mexico City in 19 Mexican states declared a gender violence alert. Consequence. Two high profile cases in February served as the catalyst for major demonstration in Mexico. On February 9, a woman named Ingrid Escamilla was skinned and killed by her allocated partner. Just a few days later, a seven year old girl named Fatima was kidnapped, tortured, and murdered. This case permitted those of protests to go to the Palacio Nacional in Mexico City, where they splashed with paint and graffiti on the main door. A national demonstration on the March 8th in the honor of the International Women's Day. The next day, 10 of the thousands of the women took part in the nationwide World Cup disappearing for the 24 hour, hours from their school and jobs. The largest letters moment known as Know the situation. Gender-based violence occurs in various forms both in public sphere and in private contexts, such as discrimination against women at political, institutional, and labor levels, sexual harassment, sexual assault, trafficking of women by prostitution, the use of the female body as an object of consumption, segregation based on religious ideas, physical, psychological, social, and sexual, and sexual abuse. This scale of damage can culminate 
in debt. As mentioned early in the video, we will talk about the climax that gender violence can reach, femicide. The crime of feminicidio, a term of Mexican origin coined by Marcela Lagarde, based on the English term femicide originated in 1976, has been criminalized in the country since 2012. It, it refers to the murders against women, girls, and elderly women of the fact for being women. Next. Percentages. Mexico closed 2020 with 3,723 violent deaths of women adding femicides and intentional homicides. Of that number, only 969 were classified as femicide, which means an average of more than two femicides per day. Only in the first five months of 2021, femicides are increased by 7.1% compared to the same period of the previous year, according to data provided by the Ministry of Public Security. Next. Policies. In the political aspect, it has been difficult to create policies against gender violence and femicides, since it is usually seen as a problem of a private aspect rather than a public aspect. However, it is already considered a public health and human rights issue. The federal district, now Mexico City, was the place where the first public policies referring to gender violence were developed in 1996, which gave rise to the first system of attention and prevention of family violence in the federal district. Over time, more policies have been developed and have evolved over the years to make them more appropriate and to keep them updated, like the general law of access to women to a life free of violence promulgated in 2007. In this way, today, 30 states have laws for the prevention of attention and attention of family violence, and 29 states typify this problematic as an autonomous crime in their criminal codes. Next. Regarding femicide, we have that the crime of femicide shall be punished in accordance with the provisions of, of the general law of women's access to life or free of violence. In the article 248, who, for reasons of gender, deprives a woman of her life, commits the crime of femicide and will be punished with a prison term of 25 to 60 years. The classification of femicide includes systemic sexual, intimate, family, for estigmatized activities, child, community, drug trafficking, or organized crime, and reckless. However, most state and local authorities are not fully trained to recognize whether there was a gender factor in a homicide so many femicides are reported as homicides. Today in Mexico, one of the most extreme cases, if not the most extreme, and representative of gender, bio, gender based violence and femicide occurs in Ciudad Juarez, where there is a huge sum of femicides in a short time. So this case is now called the death of women of Juarez. Next. Social impact. Going for the fierce level of, of gender violence, such as physical, psychological, and sexual abuse, to the culminating level of femicide, gender violence has various impact in this society. In the first place, women do not feel safe or protected in their family, school, or work environment. Second, from the government perspective, Women are seen just as another figure for violence, trafficking, sexual crimes, and femicide. 
Therefore, these are politicians, not society, empathize with this issue. Third and last, femicides leave a void in the families of the victims, and in many cases, relatives, mainly mothers and fathers, most search on their own for their missing daughter or her remains. Many children lose their mothers from one day to another. Next. This is a cruel and unfair situation that we live in every day in Mexico, where due to omissions by the state or mismanagement of the laws, these cases of gender violence are forgotten. For this reason, the society is beat up and social movements are created to enforce women's rights and demand justice from a state that turns a blind eye to gender violence. Predictions and solutions. If the current situation of gender violence doesn't improve, it is possible that the situation will remain the same or worsened by triggers such as the pandemic. Therefore, both society and government must work together to eradicate gender violence in our country. And some solutions could be. The school can the campaigns that make students get interested in promoting and achieving gender equality, effective and prompt attention to victims of gender violence, that the institutions in care of it are expanded in order to be able to attend to all the victims and comply with all the political will. Visibility of the problem at the municipal, state, and national level without sense would no antipathy. Financial assistance to victim in the legal process since last week are often expensive. Support service that provide care especially to indigenous women or women from rural communities, since it may be difficult for, the, for them to reach the support. And ensure the full and effective application of the leg legislation of fight to fight against impunity. Development of application that strengthen the culture of making a complaint. Finally, it is important that both men and women are aware of this problem for the entire society to be empathic with the victims. Otherwise, without a change, in the thinking of Mexicans, no policy will be enough to stop the violence. Failure in, the, uh, in this act will continue to affect more women and claim more lives. Bibliography. <laughs>